Hello friends. Welcome back to my channel Calibration Academy. If you are new to this channel, and if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, then please subscribe to our channel, and press the bell icon to get notifications, when we post the video on the channel. In this series of videos, I will give the answers to 70 most important instrumentation questions. After watching this video, you will have a clear understanding of instrumentation and control engineering. The first question is, what is process control? Process control in instrumentation refers to the application of various techniques, devices, and systems to manage and regulate industrial processes effectively. The primary goal of process control is to maintain specific process variables, such as temperature, pressure, flow rate, level, and composition, within desired and predefined limits to ensure the process operates safely, efficiently, and in accordance with quality standards. Second question is, what are the primary control variables? The primary control variables are temperature, pressure, flow, and level. The third question is, what are the different types of flow meters? Based on the working principle, there are five types of flow meters. First is differential pressure or DP flow meter, second type is velocity flow meter, third type is positive displacement flow meter, and fourth type is mass flow meter. The fourth question is, what are the different types of temperature measuring instruments? There are mainly five different types of temperature measuring instruments. The first type is a thermometer, the second type is a thermistor, the third type is RTD, fourth type is pyrometer, the fifth type is a thermometer, and the sixth type is an infrared thermometer. The fifth question is, what are different pressure measuring gauges? There are four main types of pressure measuring gauges. The first type is liquid column elements, such as barometer and manometer U tube. Second type is the elastic element gauge. Elastic element gauges such as Borden tube 69, bellows, diaphragm 44, and capsule. Third type is electrical transducers, such as resistance and inductance type. Fourth type is force balance devices, such as deadweight gauge, ring gauge, and bell gauge. The sixth question is, what is a transmitter? A transmitter, in the context of instrumentation and control systems, is a device used to measure a specific physical parameter or variables such as temperature, pressure, level, flow rate, or humidity, and convert this measurement into an electrical signal. This electrical signal is then sent to a control system, a data acquisition system, or other instrumentation for further processing, monitoring, or control. The seventh question is, what is a smart transmitter? A smart transmitter, also known as an intelligent transmitter, is an advanced type of measurement instrument used in industrial automation and process control systems. Unlike traditional analog transmitters, smart transmitters are equipped with built-in digital processing capabilities and communication features that enhance their functionality and allow for more sophisticated monitoring and control of industrial processes. Here are the key characteristics and features of smart transmitters. The first characteristic is digital signal processing. Smart transmitters incorporate digital signal processing capabilities, allowing them to perform complex calculations and signal conditioning tasks internally. This helps improve measurement accuracy and reliability. The second characteristic is two-way communication. Smart transmitters are capable of two-way communication with control systems and other devices. They can transmit measurement data to a central control room or data acquisition system and receive commands or configuration updates remotely. The third characteristic is digital communication protocols. Smart transmitters typically support digital communication protocols such as Heart Zero or Highway Addressable Remote Transducer Protocol or Foundation Field Bus. These protocols enable bidirectional communication over the same wiring used for the analog signal. The fourth characteristic is remote configuration. Operators and technicians can remotely configure and calibrate smart transmitters using digital communication protocols. This eliminates the need for manual adjustments in the field, saving time and reducing the risk of errors. The fifth characteristic is diagnostic information. Smart transmitters provide diagnostic information about their own health and status. This includes information about sensor health, internal temperature, and any potential issues or failures. Operators can use this data for predictive maintenance. 
The eighth question is, what is the difference between two-wire, three-wire, and four-wire transmitters? Two-wire transmitters are also known as loop-powered transmitters. They receive both power and transmit the signal using only two wires. They are powered by the same two wires used for signal transmission. Three-wire transmitters use three wires. One for power, one for the signal output, and a common ground or reference wire. The power and signal wires are separate, which allows for more precise and reliable signal transmission. Four-wire transmitters use four separate wires. Two for power and two for the signal. The power wires are independent of the signal wires, providing the most accurate and reliable measurements. The ninth question is, what is an actuator? In a closed-loop control system, the part of the final control element that translates the control signal into action by the control device. The tenth question is, what is a field bus? Field bus is a general term for a digital-only, high-speed communications protocol. The key attribute to field bus communications is higher speed communications with the possibility of addressing multiple transmitters all on the same field wiring. The eleventh question is, what are the flow measuring instruments used in flow measurement? There are different types of flow measuring instruments such as differential pressure meters and positive displacement meters, velocity meters, and thermal mass flow meters. Coriolis mass flow meters are being used in flow measurement. The twelfth question is, what type of pressure sensors are used in pressure measurement? There are different types of pressure sensors such as manometers, board and tubes, bellow elements, diaphragm elements, and DP transmitters are being used in pressure measurement. The thirteenth question is, what is control valve? A control valve is a final control element, which restricts the flow of liquid through the channel. In other words, a control valve is a mechanical device used in various industrial processes to control the flow of a fluid, such as gas, liquid, or steam, through a system. The 14th number question is, what is a control system? A control system is a system that manages, commands, directs, or regulates the behavior of other devices or systems to achieve desired outcomes or results. The fifteenth number question is, what is the difference between open loop and closed loop control systems? The main difference between open loop and closed control systems is that open loop control systems do not have feedback, while closed loop control systems use feedback to adjust the control action. The sixteenth number question is, what is a sensor, and what is its role in instrumentation? A sensor is a device that measures a physical quantity and converts it into a signal or data that can be read and processed by instrumentation and control systems. The seventeenth question is, explain the term PID controller. A PID controller is a type of control algorithm that stands for proportional integral derivative. It is used to control a wide range of industrial processes. The 18th number question is, what is SCADA, and how does it work? SCADA or Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition is a system that remotely monitors and controls industrial processes. It collects data from sensors and instruments and provides a graphical interface for operators to make decisions. The 19th question is, what is PLC, and how does it differ from a microcontroller? A PLC or Programmable Logic Controller is a specialized industrial computer used for control tasks. It is designed for reliability and robustness. A microcontroller is a general-purpose computing device, often used in embedded systems. The 20-number question is, what is the purpose of a transducer? A transducer converts one form of energy or signal into another. In instrumentation, Transducers are commonly used to convert physical parameters such as pressure, temperature, level, and flow into electrical signals. The 21 number question is, define the terms calibration and zero drift in the context of sensors. Calibration is the process of adjusting a sensor to ensure its accuracy. Zero drift is the change in a sensor's output signal when the input is at its minimum value or zero. The 22 number question is, what is signal conditioning, and why is it necessary in instrumentation? 
Signal conditioning involves modifying the raw output of a sensor to make it suitable for processing, transmission, or recording. It's necessary to eliminate noise, improve accuracy, and adapt signals to the requirements of the control system. The 23rd question is, explain the difference between analog and digital signals. Analog signals are continuous and can have infinite values within a range, while digital signals are discrete and of distinct values typically 0 or 1. The 24 question is, what are safety instrumented systems or SIS, and why are they important? SIS is designed to protect processes, people, and the environment by taking action to mitigate potentially hazardous situations. They are crucial for safety in industrial operations. Question number 25 is, please explain the concept of cascade control. Cascade control is a control strategy in which one controller's output is used as the set point for another controller, helping to improve control performance and stability. The 26 number question is, what is Modbus, and how is it used in industrial communication? Modbus is a common communication protocol used in industrial automation to allow various devices to communicate with each other. It's often used for data exchange between PLCs and other equipment. The 27 number question is, what is the role of redundancy in control systems, and how does it improve reliability? Redundancy involves duplicating critical components or systems in a control system. It enhances reliability by providing backup mechanisms in case of failures. The 28th number question is, what is flow measurement, and why is it important in industrial processes? Flow measurement is the quantification of the rate at which a fluid such as liquid, gas, or steam moves through a pipeline or system. It's crucial for process control, quality assurance, and resource management. The 29 number question is, what are the primary methods for measuring fluid flow? The primary methods include differential pressure measurement using orifice plates, venturi tubes, or flow nozzles, and electromagnetic flow measurement, ultrasonic flow measurement, turbine flow measurement, vortex shedding flow measurement, and positive displacement flow measurement. The 30 number question is, what is Reynolds number, and why is it significant in flow measurement? The Reynolds number is a dimensionless parameter that characterizes the flow regime of a fluid. It helps determine whether the flow is laminar or turbulent, which is crucial in selecting the appropriate flow measurement technique. The 31 number question is, explain the working principle of an orifice plate flow meter. An orifice plate creates a pressure drop as the fluid passes through a constricted area. The differential pressure across the plate is used to calculate the flow rate using the Bernoulli equation. The 32 number question is, what factors can affect the accuracy of flow measurements? Factors include changes in fluid properties such as density, viscosity, pipe conditions, variations in temperature and pressure, and the condition of the flow measurement device. The 33 number question is, what is the purpose of a flow calibration? Flow calibration is the process of verifying the accuracy of a flow measurement device by comparing its measurements with a known standard. It ensures the device provides reliable and accurate data. Is the purpose of a flow calibration? The 34 number question is, what are the advantages and limitations of ultrasonic flow meters? Ultrasonic flow meters are non-intrusive and suitable for a wide range of applications. However, they may not perform well with highly viscous or aerated fluids. The 35 number question is, what is the difference between volumetric and mass flow measurement? Volumetric flow measures the volume of fluid passing through a point per unit of time, while mass flow measures the mass of fluid. Mass flow is often preferred because it is less affected by changes in temperature and pressure. The 36 number question is, what is low flow cutoff in flow measurement? Low flow cutoff in flow measurement refers to a minimum flow rate below which the flow measurement device or system is unable to provide accurate or reliable measurements. In many flow measurement devices, there is a practical limit to how low of a flow rate they can accurately measure. The 37 number question is, what is empty pipe detection in a magnetic flowmeter? 
Empty pipe detection in a magnetic flowmeter is a feature or function designed to detect and indicate when the pipe or conduit through which the flowmeter is installed does not contain any flow. For example, it is empty. The 38th number question is, what is level measurement? Level measurement is the process of determining the height of a substance such as liquid, solid, or gas within a container or process vessel. It is essential for monitoring and controlling various industrial processes. The 39 number question is, why level measurement is important? Accurate level measurement is crucial for process control, safety, and efficiency. It ensures that vessels do not overfill or run dry, prevents spills, helps maintain product quality, and facilitates inventory management. The question 40 is, what are the primary methods of level measurement? There are several methods of level measurement, which include, differential pressure, ultrasonic, capacitance, float, and displacer, and guided wave radar. The question 41 is, what factors can affect the accuracy of level measurements? Several factors can influence the accuracy of level measurements, including changes in temperature, pressure, density, and the dielectric constant of the liquid. The vessel's geometry and the presence of foam or turbulence can also affect measurement accuracy. The question 42 is, what are some common applications for level measurement? Level measurement is used in a wide range of applications, such as monitoring and controlling liquid levels in tanks, silos, and pipelines, measuring the interface between two immiscible liquids, ensuring proper ingredient levels in mixing processes, and managing the water level in wastewater treatment plants. Question 43 is, how is the DP transmitter applied to a closed tank? In a closed tank, the bottom of the tank is connected to the high-pressure side of the transmitter, and the top of the tank is connected to the LP side of the transmitter. In this way the vessel pressure is balanced. Question 44 is, how is a DP transmitter applied to an open tank? In an open tank level measurement the LP side is vented to the atmosphere. Whatever pressure acts is on the HP side which is a measure of level. Question 45 is, what is a wet leg and what is a dry leg? A wet leg refers to a section of a pressure instrument, such as a pressure transmitter or differential pressure sensor, where one side is exposed to the process fluid such as liquid or gas, and the other side is in contact with a reference fluid, typically a liquid or gas with known properties. On the other side, in a dry leg setup, there is no separate reference fluid, and the pressure instrument directly measures the pressure from the process itself. Dry leg configurations are commonly used in situations where it's not practical or necessary to use a separate reference fluid. The 46 number question is, what is the purpose of zero trim? Zero trim is useful for compensating mounting position effects or for zero shifts due to static pressure in DP applications. The 47 number question is, how will you check zero of level DP transmitter while it is in line? To check the zero of the DP transmitter, first of all, close both the isolation valves. Then open the vent valve on the LP leg and HP leg drain. Finally, check and adjust zero if necessary. The 48th number question is, what is the purpose of a condensation port in DP level measurement? Condensation port is used to ensure constant pressure at the low pressure side. It ensures that the condensation of steam in the impulse lines does not impair the ability to accurately sense differential pressure fluctuations and minimize gauge line error. The 49 number question is, how to remove DPT from service? To remove DPT from service, first of all, close the low pressure side block valve. Secondly, open the equalizing valve. Finally, close the high pressure side block valve. The question number 50 is, how to put DPT back into service? To put DPT back into service, first of all, begin with all valves closed, open the equalizing valve. Then open the high pressure side block valve slowly. Then close the equalizing valve. At the end, open the low pressure side block valve. The question number 51 is, how to do zeroing of DP transmitter? To do zeroing of the transmitter, first of all, close the low pressure side block valve. 
Then in step 2, open the equalizing valve, and finally, once zeroing is done close the equalizing valve and open the low pressure side block valve. The question number 52 is, what are the advantages and disadvantages of different level measurement methods? Each level measurement method has its own set of advantages and disadvantages. For example, ultrasonic is non-contact, suitable for various liquids, but can be affected by temperature and vapor. Similarly, radar is suitable for a wide range of applications, including corrosive liquids, but can be costly. Differential pressure is reliable and relatively low cost but requires maintenance and can be affected by density changes. Capacitance is suitable for conductive and non-conductive liquids but may require adjustment for the choice of level measurement method depends on the specific application's requirements and conditions. The question number 53 is, what is a pressure transmitter? A pressure transmitter is a device that measures pressure in a fluid such as liquid or gas and converts that pressure into an electrical signal, typically a 4 to 20 mA current signal or a voltage signal. This electrical signal can be transmitted to a control system, where it is used for monitoring and control purposes. The question number 54 is, how does the pressure transmitter work? Pressure transmitters work based on the principle that a change in pressure applied to a sensing element such as a diaphragm or strain gauge results in a proportional change in electrical output. When pressure is applied to the sensing element, it deforms, causing a change in resistance, capacitance, or some other electrical property, which is then converted into an electrical signal that represents the pressure. The question number 55 is, what are the key considerations when selecting a pressure transmitter? When selecting a pressure transmitter, it's essential to consider several factors, including pressure range, compatibility, output signal, and environmental conditions. The question number 56 is, how is a pressure transmitter calibrated and maintained? Pressure transmitters should be calibrated periodically to ensure accurate measurements. Calibration involves comparing the transmitter's output to a known reference standard. Maintenance may also include regular inspection, cleaning, and checking for any damage. Some transmitters can be adjusted to correct for deviations from the specified accuracy. The question number 57 is, what are common applications for pressure transmitters? Pressure transmitters are used in a wide range of applications, including industrial process control, HVAC systems, automotive, oil and gas, and aerospace. Thank you friends for watching this video. I hope this video is helpful for you. The question number 58 is, what are the different temperature measurement methods? There are several temperature measurement methods, including thermocouples, resistance temperature detectors, thermistors, infrared pyrometers, bimetallic temperature sensors, and non-contact temperature sensors like infrared and ultrasonic sensors. The question number 59 is, can you explain the working principle of a thermocouple and provide an example of its application? A thermocouple consists of two dissimilar metals connected at one end. When there is a temperature difference between the junction and the other ends, it generates a voltage proportional to the temperature. An example of an application is temperature measurement in industrial furnaces and ovens. The question number 60 is, what is the advantage of using an RTD over a thermocouple for temperature measurement? RTDs are known for their high accuracy and stability over a wide temperature range. They have a nearly linear resistance temperature relationship, making them ideal for precise temperature measurement in laboratories and industrial processes. The question number 61 is, how do you ensure the accuracy of temperature measurements using an RTD? Ensuring the accuracy of RTD measurements involves regular calibration against known reference standards, often at multiple temperature points. The use of precision resistors in the measurement circuit and proper lead wire compensation are also essential. The question number 62 is, what are the main advantages and limitations of using non-contact temperature measurement methods like infrared pyrometers? Infrared pyrometers are advantageous for non-contact measurements and can measure extremely high temperatures. However, their accuracy may be affected by factors like emissivity, distance, and the presence of obstructions between the sensor and the target. The question number 63 is, what are some common temperature measurement applications for thermistors? 
Thermistors are often used in applications where a highly sensitive and compact temperature sensor is required, such as in medical devices, automotive engines, and HVAC systems. The question number 64 is, how do you address temperature measurement challenges in environments with extreme conditions, such as high radiation or extreme cold? In such environments, special temperature sensors or protective enclosures may be necessary to shield the sensor from extreme conditions. Additionally, accurate compensation techniques and calibration are vital for maintaining measurement accuracy. The question number 65 is, explain the concept of emissivity in infrared temperature measurement. Emissivity is a measure of an object's ability to emit infrared radiation. Infrared pyrometers rely on emissivity to calculate temperature accurately. Different materials have different emissivity values, and understanding and setting the correct emissivity is crucial for accurate temperature measurement. The question number 66 is, what is the significance of traceability in temperature measurements, and how is it achieved? Traceability ensures that measurements are linked to recognized standards and can be consistently reproduced. Achieving traceability involves using calibrated reference standards, documented procedures, and maintaining a clear measurement chain from the sensor to the standard reference. The question number 67 is, in what situations would you recommend using thermocouples over other temperature measurement methods, and why? Thermocouples are recommended when high temperature measurements are needed, or when durability and reliability in harsh environments are critical. They are widely used in industries like metallurgy, manufacturing, and aerospace due to their versatility and robustness. The question number 68 is, explain the concept of loop calibration and temperature instrumentation. Loop calibration involves calibrating the entire temperature measurement loop, including the sensor, transmitter, and control system. It ensures that all components work together to provide accurate and reliable temperature readings. The question number 69 is, explain the principle behind resistance temperature detectors. RTDs operate on the principle that the electrical resistance of certain metals increases predictably with temperature. Platinum is commonly used in RTDs for its stability and linearity. The question number 70 is, what is the significance of the three-wire and four-wire configurations in RTD measurements? The three-wire and four-wire configurations are used to compensate for lead wire resistance in RTD measurements, ensuring more accurate temperature readings by accounting for the resistance of the connecting wires. Thank you friends for watching this video. I hope this video is helpful for you. Please give us your valuable feedback in comment box. And if you have any questions about this video, then please feel free to ask me your questions in comment box. And please like and share this video with your friends if you think our content is informative for you and others.